Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Chopper. I am from Periodontology Specialist Educational Program, Faculty of Dentistry, Hafsundari University, Makassar, Indonesia. Today I'm going to present about the management of amlodipine induced gingival enlargement in hypertensive patient with gingivectomy. A case report. So first of all, we are going to talk about gingival enlargement. Gingival enlargement is a feature of periodontal disease where gingival growth exceeds normal gingival tissue dimension, increasing gingival size. Hyperplasia, which is increase of number of cells, hypertrophy, increase in cell sizes, and fibrosis are observed during gingival enlargement and cannot be accurately differentiated. Calcium channel blocker induced gingival enlargement, especially those induced by nephidipine, shows mixed inflammatory and fibrotic tissues. Gingival enlargement is one of the side effects associated with administration of certain drugs. Drugs that can induce gingival overgrowth can be divided into three categories. Anticonvulsant, calcium channel blockers, and immunosuppressants. Today we are going to focus more on calcium channel blockers, which are often used as antihypertensive drugs. Therefore, it increases the number of gingival enlargement in cases with hypertensive patients. Calcium channel blockers dilate arteries by inhibiting the low of extracellular calcium into cells through voltage-operated calcium cells, calcium channels, causing relaxation of vascular smooth muscle cells, thus effectively reducing blood pressure. Based on their vascular and cardiac selectivity, calcium channel blockers can be classified into three main groups, namely dehydropyridines, which is included in nifedipine and amlodipine, diphenylalkylamines or ferapamil, and benzothiazepines, which is diltiazem. Dihydropyridines block the long-lasting type or L-type calcium channels, thus block the depolarization of vascular smooth muscle cells, cardiac myocytes, and cardiac nodal tissues, which are primarily dependent on calcium influx. The other two are more effective in cardiac muscle than in vascular smooth cells. Among all the calcium channel blockers, nifedipine is the most frequently associated with gingival overgrowth. Diphenylalkylamines and benzothiazepines have significantly lower prevalences than nifedipine. So, related to this case, how does amlodipine induce gingival enlargement? So, uh, a little bit of information about amlodipine. Amlodipine is the derivative of dihydropyridine, first reported by Seymour in 1994, which is a long-acting drug, shows relatively fewer side effects, and offers greater protection against major complications of hi hypertension compared to nifedipine. It is actually comparatively less, less common among other calcium channel blockers uh, for amlodipine to induce gingival enlargement. The prevalence of it is 3.3%. So actually, the pathogenesis of gingival enlargement induced by the use of amlodipine is still unclear. But there are two pathways suggested by a few studies. First one is the non-inflammatory pathway. Second one is the inflammatory pathway. So the non according to the non-inflammatory pathways, degrees uptake of folic acid blockage of aldosterone synthesis, feedback increase in adrenocortical cropic hormone level cause alteration in collagenized activity, and upregulation of keratocyte growth factor. Amlodipine also overexpresses interleukin 1 alpha and other pro inflammatory cytokines in gingival fibroblasts, hence, increase the inflammatory process. Amlodipine also affects the modulation of fibrosis response in gingival fibroblasts, upregulates extracellular matrix proteases, and favors the deposition of fibrotic tissue. Some risk factors include dose and length of use, age, gender, oral health status, and gingival inflammation. Since it is not really fully understood, it is a challenge for periodontists to diagnose and treat these cases effectively. So what is the problem with gingival enlargement? It has three problems. It hinders the maintenance of oral hygiene, 
which makes it harder for patients with gingival enlargement. It can elevate the risk of infections, uh, also related to the plague and bacteria trapped in the excessive gingival tissues. And this could lead to increased inflammatory complications, which may aggravate systemic inflammations. The treatment in this case can be classified into two, non-surgical treatment and surgical treatment. Firstly is the non-surgical treatment, which is our hydrogen instruction and motivation, scaling and root planning and drug substitution. If the changing for enlargement have no response and doesn't have any resolution, then uh, we can proceed to the surgical procedure, which is gingivectomy or gingivoplasty in this case. So gingivectomy is a surgical incision of pathological enlarged gingival tissue, shown in this picture. It aims to eliminate pocket, produce good visual field, and determine a predictable gingival morphology according to surgery. So uh, this case, this case report aims to highlight gingivectomy as an effective treatment modality in managing amlodipine-induced gingival enlargement in hypertensive patients. Case report. A 59-year-old female patient was referred to the periodontology department of Hassanuddin University Dental Hospital with a chief complaint of gum swelling and redness in the mandibular area starting from six months ago. Medical history revealed that the patient was diagnosed with hypertension and was prescribed amlodipine uh, 10 mg for the last one year. Dental history revealed that the last scaling and root planning was performed one month ago and patient brushes the teeth twice a day. Extraoral examination shows blood pressure was 130 over 80. No cervical lymphadenopathy, no swelling, normal cranial nerve responses. Intraoral, intraoral examination shows diffuse lobulated nodular gingival enlargement involving interdental marginal and attached gingival of 36 to 45. Bleeding on probing with uh, few plaque and calculus deposits. And inflamed gingiva with soft to firm consistency. The diagnosis, drug induced gingiva enlargement concerning 36 to 45 due to the use of amlodipine. So uh, initially, oral hygiene instructions and motivation, super gingival scaling and polishing followed by subgingival scaling and root planning work performed. The patient was consulted by, with her internist for drug substitution and blood pressure control. Then her internist uh, referred her back to us. Amlodipine was replaced with catapress or clonidine uh, 150 milligram. So these are the preoperative photographs, which shows gingival enlargements in the right posterior area, anterior area, and the left posterior area. The gingivectomy procedure was performed in three visits, okay, starting with the anterior, then the left, and then the right posterior of the mandible. The surgery begins with the disinfection of the operating site, infiltration of non-epinephrine non local anesthesia, use pocket markers to determine the bleeding points of 3-6 until 4-5, then uh, Number 15 scapel was used for incision on the facial aspect at an angle of 45 degrees, apical to a point marking, and directed coronally, which forms the external bevel following the contour of the gingival. Gingival flaccid was done using urban and cupola knife. The operating site was irrigated with saline solution, and the surgical area was covered with a periodontal pack, and detailed post operative instructions and medications were given. One week after the surgery, the periodontal pack was removed. The patient had no complaints. However, pinnacle examinations, uh, which are shown in the pictures above, reveals redness in the area of the op operation. Post-surgical area was cleaned with, uh, was cleaned professionally and irrigated with saline solution. Then, oral hygiene procedures and motivations were reinforced. One month after the surgery, uh, shows improved aesthetic in terms of gingival experience, gingival appearance, and healthy, stable gingival tissues. So, discussion. Amlodipine-induced gingival enlargement 
clinically shows as lobular or nodular enlargement of the interdental papilla in the anterior region. And it can occur within six months after starting amlodipine consumption at a dose of 10 mg per day, or 5 mg for more than six months. Or a case also presents uh, juniper enlargement after two years at the dose of 5 mg per day. So even though amlodipine causes molecular and cellular changes in gingival tissues, which are proved in several studies, gingival enlargement also fully depends on periodontal health and hygiene. As periodontal health worsens, the degree of gingival overgrowth increases. The presence of plague and inflammation exacerbates gingival enlargement irrespective of initiating drug. So this gingival overgrowth also increases the potential for plague retention setting unwanted chronic inflammation, which may aggravate system inflammation. In this case, gingival enlargement persists up to initial non-surgical treatment. So it indicates further surgical involvement. There are no underlying bone loss, so external buffer gingivectomy and gingival passive were done. So uh, removal of excessive gingival tissue improved ha access for professional and home cleaning, facilitating good hygiene and aesthetic outcome. Patient education, proper practice of oral hygiene plays an important role in the case management success, preventing recurrence of gingival enlargement. Conclusion, gingival enlargement can be induced by drug consumption. In this report, it is induced by amlodipine consumption. Good maintenance of oral hygiene, prescribing alternative medicine, performing professional non-surgical management, and surgical therapy if needed are the main available treatment modalities. In this case, gingivectomy along with drug substitution and oral prophylaxis provides satisfying treatment results. Uh, that is my presentation for today. Thank you.